Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> We're going to take a pause from our summer European road trip videos just another time because whilst we was at Van Life Eats, um, we met someone special, didn't we? Well, two someone specials yes. with their car, Sheila the Aguila. We meet people and we like to give a couple of minutes to share their story um, about maybe their van or their travels. But we didn't think giving a couple of minutes to Sheila... Um, <laughs> and to tell the story of Doug and Alex um, was going to be enough. So we decided we wanted to make a dedicated video to share their story with you. Yeah, they're doing something really exciting that we both at some point desperately want to do. But it's not something we can do with the boys, I don't think. Not at all. They're doing, children. They're doing the Mongol rally, guys, which is just something right up there on the bucket list we'd love to do. Yeah, it's a it's basically a race from here to Mongolia. Absolutely. <laughs> we watched um, King and It do it a few years ago, and when we saw that, we were like, that is right up there on our bucket list. We definitely want to do that. Anyway, um, uh, Doug and Alex are doing this next year. Um, they've got Sheila the Aguila, um, a lovely little car, and um, that's what this video is about. just want to share their story about what they're doing. Oh, you need to hang in there and see what they've done to Sheila to be able to get her 20,000 miles across desert and bogs and everything in between. Have a look at what they've done. It's incredible. And the good causes that they're trying to raise money for to do it. So um, at the end, there's details there if you're interested in, in helping them out achieve this. So I hope you enjoy the video. And we will be back with plenty more European road trip videos at the weekend. Okay, as we've been at the show, we've been wandering around, spotting all sorts of really interesting things, and Doug and Alex have really caught our attention, because you have got a massive project that you're working on. Could you tell me a little bit about you two, first of all? Um, so I'm an occupational therapist uh, in the NHS, um, yeah. uh, but I love the outdoors um, and I've wanted to do the Mongol rally for quite a while yeah. um, so that I can see the world uh, from a different perspective and flying everywhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of me. So I want to get out of, out of just kind of working through the pandemic and, and get out there and explore a bit more again. Excellent. What about you, Doug? Uh, I'm Doug, as I know, I'm, I'm basically I'm a prosthetist. So my job is I make uh, prosthetic arms and legs for people and fit them. And that's oh. a rather odd profession, but it's uh, what I love to do. Um, I've, I'm basically uh, I'm a, a veteran myself. I was in the armed forces and I wanted to raise some money for charity as well as experience and explore the world. And, uh, you know, look into it, raising money for some veteran charities. And that's uh, where we sort of started getting the idea that we wanted to do the, uh, the Mongol rally. And that was... Uh, where we began. And you're going to do the Mongol Rally in 2022? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So we yeah. set off uh, <laughs> July 2022. Yeah. Um, we set off and it uh, should take uh, six weeks, I believe. Is it? Or two months? Two months. Two, two months, months, uh, months. Yeah. Two months. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, and this vehicle behind you, <laughs> You're doing it in something really, really tiny. <laughs> Absolutely. I think if I'd be doing it, I'd want to do it with a little bit of comfort. Why have you picked this gorgeous, <laughs> but really quite little and not very new so, vehicle? The idea of the rally is that it's a challenge and that yeah. it's not done in comfort. Um, you're outside your comfort zones, you're rough, roughing it a little bit. Um, and there's kind of two main rules when you get in your car. One is that it's got to be 1.2 litres or less and the right. other is that it's got to cost under 500 pounds right so that's why we ended up with a 450 pound uh, car <laughs> two liters uh, 1.2 sorry 1.2 liters Boxer Aguila, 2003 um, plate yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's why we've got that car yeah. wow <laughs> okay so you're going to spend four months yeah. traveling living yeah. exploring in this car can you show us around it a little bit and see how we're going to do that in such a teeny tiny little car? Absolutely. Yeah. Should we? Uh, should we show you where we drive from? Yeah, yes. I drive. Um, twenty thousand miles is quite a long way. <laughs> how long do you think you're going to be driving each day? I'd say that uh, oh, each day it, it can depend. It depends what we're seeing and what we're passing, but um, I'd imagine it's something like eight eight hours driving a day, maybe like full time job, but. 
travelling in a car. <laughs> and it's a race as well, isn't it? So are you going to give yourself time to see things on the way there? Or are you aiming to win the race? Is it a race or is it a journey? So um, it's kind of sold more as a journey than a race. So um, we're kind of just given your, your start date and location and the finish date and location. And, and basically the idea is just to get there in your own time um, and enjoy what you want to enjoy along the way. Um, yeah, so it's, it's not all about the speed or anything like that. It's about the journey. Uh, and, meet the and people you meet on the way. And, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Are you hoping to hook up with other people in convoy or are you looking forward to doing it very much as yourselves or a bit of both? So we've, uh, we've teamed up, we're planning to convoy across Iran with a number of teams. Yes. Um, you need to have a guide with you if you're from the UK. So uh, to save on getting guides, we're going to uh, team up with a number of teams from the UK. Um, we've got a couple of Irish teams on board. One of them's uh, Team Three Best Buddies, and they're three <laughs> potato farmers from Ireland. They, uh, <laughs> they're driving a fantastic little micro, and so we're going to meet up with them, and hopefully we should just cruise all the way there, meeting those people and then meeting people on the way. That's what it's all about. That's, yeah. Now, from memory, from the other people that I've seen who have done this, it starts with a big party. Is it a themed party? Do you know anything about that? Is it fancy dress? Um, so at the moment we don't even know where the start line is okay. so sometimes it's in the UK and sometimes it's been in Prague um, so we haven't got a massive amount of information on that just yet um, but from what we've seen of the party at the start line previous years it's it's been pretty pretty mad uh, and I think a lot of people do kind of go full-blown fancy dress have a great time and then the uh, first day driving might not be so long <laughs> <laughs> what modifications have you had to make to the car where did you start uh, so we initially started, well, at the front of the car here, we've not changed very much at all. It's your bog standard box of the Gila. It's, you know, we've got very little in here that's changed. Um, we haven't even got a radio that works properly. We've got, you know, three CDs maximum at the moment. I think we'll have to change that before we drive 20,000 miles in it. Um, so, yeah, from this far forward, the only part we've changed is uh, we've popped in some uh, flick forward seats from a three door Corsa. Um, and uh, the, the reason we've done that is because it helps us with uh, the rest of the stuff we've done with the car. Um, so, modifications-wise, we started by purely by gutting this car, the back of the car. Everything's out. There's, there was nothing left in there. It was back to the bare metal, and uh, from there we've built upwards. And we'll I'll show you a bit more. In a moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this side of the car, we've got our 40-liter fridge. So that's connected to our leisure battery. So it slides out. We've got all our food in there. So we're living out of the car, as we've said first four months so we wanted to make sure that we have plenty of storage to have food on the go um, don't need to stop too much then or too often because uh, we can keep it all cool and, and and have it there as we go so that's this side uh, so on this side we've got a, a storage for our clothing um, this is a little pull out drawer um, behind it we've got a box which holds our leisure, ba leisure battery and uh, you know we've got it that nicely boxed in so it's uh, all secure um, we've got the fuses and all the electrics here and we have uh, there's a switch panel just here but that's more visible when uh, when the bed's fully out how long does it take you to convert into <laughs> night and day mode oh it should take us a matter of minutes it's uh, yeah pick it all together yeah about five minutes and that's yeah. it brilliant one <laughs> <laughs> these pull out cabinets are fantastic did you design them yourselves did you have someone do it for you um, absolutely everything that you can see we've built in there is all designed by us we uh, we Brilliant. stripped it down and then went how what can we fit let's see how it works um, so yeah we started with a uh, looking at what we needed a little kitchen a little bit of storage for food yeah. a table to sit around and that we went from there yeah, because we're in the car for four months, we bought the 40 litre fridge yeah. and everything was kind of built around the size of the fridge. So the height of the bed was all done around how big the fridge ended up being. So um, once that was kind of in place, then we were able to see like, what space we had to work with, with the, with the cooker and what size cooker we needed to buy and uh, how many pans and plates and stuff we could manage to fit in and that sort of thing. What you can get away with yeah. versus what you think you need as well. Like, exactly. That's a balance. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we've uh, minimalised minimized, Sorry, the uh, amount of uh, pots, pans, everything we need. We can. Yeah. I think we're down to what, two pans? Two pans. Two pans, a couple of bowls, a couple of plates, uh, two forks, two knives, two spoons, yeah. you know, 
two wooden spoons, a couple of knives, and that's just, uh, that's pretty much it. And you know, we um, I think there's probably a chopping board in there somewhere too. <laughs> <laughs> Are you both naturally very tidy? Mm, um, I am, I think. Uh, yeah. I tend to chase Doug around and say, yeah. like, oh, put this back away, like, fold it up and put it in, put it where it's meant to be. I know, be. my ex-military like, background should have trained me better, you'd think, <laughs> wouldn't you? have gone the opposite way now. Absolutely. Um, yeah, like, everything's got its, its place, really, but we mm. are still kind of learning where things mm. go best and how things best work for us because we haven't obviously been able to go in it that much yet so we're kind of figuring out things that we're missing things that we can change and like we're forever coming up with ideas already like how we can change things where things might fit better and, and work better so. it might be interesting to see what you decide you don't need as well of Absolutely. the things that you've got it's not just what you're missing it's like, actually Absolutely. am i really going to use two wooden spoons or <laughs> do i need what yeah yeah, yeah. So it's all about weight as well because yeah. obviously we've put a lot of weight in the car we took a lot of weight out by by stripping it back to bare metal yeah. and then we've put a, a lot of plywood in there so <laughs> yeah. the weight's now back up i'm sure we've not weighed it but so we were always thinking of, of how we can save on weight so we've already got ideas of how we need to cut out more holes in, in the wood like yeah. underneath the mattress to just save a little bit on weight here and there to, to help out on the journey yeah now my absolute favorite feature i know it's all very clever <laughs> is this beautiful table in the middle can you tell me a little oh, bit about yeah, that absolutely so originally we just had a bog standard ply, plywood table it was uh, nothing special um, so in, in doing this we're also in doing this rally we're also trying to promote some small veteran business veteran owned businesses there's quite a few have offered their help they came together the veteran community came together and to offer their support it was incredible yeah. um, one guy in particular is a guy called Dan and he runs a company called veteran trees and they um, he was a vet, uh, armed forces veteran then a tree surgeon and now he makes incredible pieces of woodwork um, using some of the offcuts and bits of wood he harvested when he was uh, when he was a tree surgeon he, uh, he kindly offered to make us sort of a feature piece for our vehicle and he made us this fantastic table with a with the logo that we designed for the uh, for our rally team so it's uh, yeah it's come together and it looks I think it looks absolutely stunning it's he's beautiful a, he's when I walked past yesterday I kept stroking because <laughs> <laughs> it is so amazing yeah very beautiful. It's so, it's I think it's amazing, open it? yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so. yeah um, yeah, so we've got the, the cooker that slides out and then the storage underneath for all the, the cooking utensils and then the other drawer that we've got in the back is kind of food storage um, and then inside the car we've got two cabinets on either side so we've got a games cupboard and one for kind of toiletries and bits like that and then the bottom cupboards go all the way down into the footwells yeah. so there's loads of storage there for like warm gear, towels, uh, sleeping bags and stuff like that so we're utilising as much space as we can, everything's got its place. Make sure we put some elastic across so stuff doesn't start falling out as we hit potholes yeah the first, yeah. Journey, the first <laughs> yeah. journey that we did we put a bottle of whiskey in one of the uh, cupboards and um, we hadn't picked up the cushions yet so we were on the way to pick the cushions up um, to go on our first trip and the cupboard falls open and yeah. this whiskey's just it's teetering tottering on the off the edge like, oh, no, no whiskey <laughs> Luckily, no, I know, I know. Luckily it's Whiskey survived. business. <laughs> <laughs> um, and your mattress is in several parts. Is that for optimum packing away? Yeah, pretty much. It's just the easiest way that we thought to kind of uh, be able to store it all and, and move things around to flip the bed out. So we yeah. see the two front bits are separate. Um, so it's easier to have separate cushions for those. In the when we're cooking, just to avoid fire risk, we have to move one of the cushions back. So that's why we split the ones in the back in half. And then, yeah, it allows us all to be folded away. And uh, it allows us, even when we're in bed, if we need to make a quick getaway, yeah. we can uh, fold the, the mattress back, fold back the, uh, the panel behind the driver's seat and set the driver's seat up and drive off with the bed still yeah. set up. So it can, yeah, that's why we went for the, the split design. And the uh, thickness of mattress we've gone for, it's uh, its so comfortable. It's more comfortable than my bed at home. Really? You know, it really yeah. is. Yeah, so it doesn't look it, but like, yeah. It's three inch um, uh, foam, isn't it? High density, uh, high foam. density foam. foam. yeah. And it's so comfortable. I love this really visual board that you've got. The red route is your route there and the green one back. Why have you picked the route that you have or the routes that you have? Uh, yeah, so the red route's the route out, so we've got about two months to get to, to Mongolia. Um, so um, we're kind of going across Europe and, and down to Greece, and then through Turkey, uh, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and into Iran. Um, 
people kind of hesitate a little bit sometimes when we say we're taking that route um, but we've heard amazing things um, about that area and, and the hospitality and stuff so we really want to to go and experience that if we can um, and then we're going up through Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, um, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan uh, and then Kazakhstan and we have to nip into Russia and then back into Mongolia um, uh, because of the border crossings and then we finish just back in Russia there again uh, which is where normally people send their cars back from um, a lot of people send them back on trains but we have decided that we're going to drive it back um, so that's the green route so. uh, yeah on the uh, on the green route going back we're obviously blitzing it across Russia we um, the uh, visa doesn't let us stay there that long so we're going across uh, Russia we're going up Finland but then we're going to the right to the north here heading down Sweden then back down through Europe, we're going all the way down Italy to Sicily. And then uh, the plan is to come up through the south of France, drive down through Spain to Gibraltar, into Portugal, then head back all the way up on the way back to the UK. Wow. <laughs> so as well as doing this for your own adventure, you're not just doing it for that, you're doing it for charity as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, we, uh, this is actually the main reason we wanted to do it, was to support charity. We, uh, we picked two charities that mean quite a bit to us. Uh, the first one being uh, Blesma, which is the British uh, Limbless Veterans Charity. And uh, this is because, uh, as a veteran myself, you know, I would love to support veterans where I can. Yeah. But uh, I also work as a prosthetist, so working with uh, amputees and lots of veterans who are amputees. It's a small charity, it's been going since the First World War, and they help uh, uh, veterans with limb loss, sight loss, and loss of hearing. And they just help in immeasurable ways, and we think it's just very worthwhile and such a worthy cause. Yeah, and the other charity um, is affiliated with um, the, the company that kind of run the rally um, which I kind of get my eco fix on that side because it's uh, for Cool Earth yeah. so um, they work with indigenous populations um, to look at sustainable ways of reducing um, deforestation uh, and, and maintaining the rainforests um, as I say in a sustainable long-term way uh, yeah so they've um, saved sort of I think a uh, hundred thousand hectares of, um, of rainforest through wow. their work so far um, and uh, the rally has raised um, a lot of money for them so far 1. 2 as well. million, so I believe. yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. so it's a really great cause and, and we kind of wanted to show as well that you can you can travel to amazing places in a more sustainable way than flying as well so our carbon footprint from this journey is going to be um, much much less than than if we flew into each of the, the countries that we want to explore um, I think if we one of us flew into each of the countries our carbon footprint would be three times more uh, than for the entire journey in the car so and that's just for one of us and we're trying to avoid using plastic and uh, we're trying to avoid leaving waste and that's part of the reason we're driving the vehicle all the way back and yeah. Um, so a lot of the companies that we've been kind of approaching for sponsorship and stuff as well are quite sustainable com companies. So companies that kind of uh, align with our ethos and, and the things that we're trying to do in our day-to-day -day life to kind of reduce our impact as well. So. One of the ways we'd like to support you, because this is exciting and fantastic, is we would like to help you figure out how to sell advertising on your, your vehicle. We own a signs and graphics business and we will help you with a wireframe, give you the printouts and then we'll provide the, the graphics. So if anybody would like to buy some advertising, we'll get the details to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's space on all of the door panels. We want to get a logos all on there for, for companies that, that want to support and I mean their, their logo will then go across uh, over 20 countries uh, there and back and, and be some great publicity for them hopefully. So. We'll put contact information in the description guys. Fantastic. Also also you're going to be at the international no you're going to be at the adventure overland and international camper van show as well aren't you we are, yeah. Absolutely. fantastic <laughs> so we'll help get everything ready for that so anybody attending the show will be able to come and support you directly there fantastic. as well fantastic amazing thank you. <laughs> thank you so much thank you for doing this for the charity it's well done in your adventurous spirit and thank you for talking to us it's it's been a real pleasure talking to you all the information is going to be in the description of this video and they're going to be at the international no the adventure overland and international camper van show in about two or three weeks so we'll see you there and hopefully see you there